Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to Suck Up, the AI chat driven vampire game where you have to convince people to let you into their house by any means necessary so you can eat them and take control of things. Do I want a bag on my head? Oh look, a construction outfit. Let's try this option. Okay, so I have played a bit of this and um, I've already broken into a few houses, so I'm going to run a bit further up the road and try some new people. Uh, Brian Bitcoin over there can be tackled later. The neighbourhood watch shouldn't be out yet. So, this house, I don't know who's in here. Can we go up the ladder? Large package. Uh, large can. Maybe this guy likes barbecue stuff. He's left all his food outside. Maybe if I dress up as a lover of barbecue, that'll be, oh, what's here? Duffel bag. Okay. Let's go for the duffel bag play here. Hello. Raven. Uh, what do you want at this ungodly hour? Can't you see I'm in the middle of an existential crisis here? Okay, so I'm a construction worker with a duffel bag. Um, I think the duffel bag is full of healing crystals. Yes, ma'am, I can. And I've got this here duffel bag full of healing crystals that I was told need to be arrayed around your house. Oh, she says, healing crystals? Seriously, do I look like someone who needs that woo-woo nonsense? Keep your duffel bag away from me and take your crystals to some gullible fool who actually believes in that stuff. Okay, I will. Uh, um, let's try this. You know what, you're right. I was never too sure about this stuff. It's good to hear somebody talking sense and reinforcing what I actually believe, that this is a load of garbage. Can you believe I fell for this? Okay, she says, Ha ha, glad to see you finally came to your senses. It's easy to get caught up in all that nonsense sometimes. But hey, we all make mistakes. Just remember to trust your own instincts next time. Well, that's, that's good advice, Raven. Uh, what else, what can I say to get her to let me in? Oh, talk about barbecue. You're so right, Raven. You know, it's the simple things in life that really matter. What I really love is a good old-fashioned barbecue. Do you like barbecue? Uh -huh. She says, oh, absolutely. I can't resist a good barbecue. Come on in. We can grill up some burgers. Oh, okay. So, a bit of feedback for any dev watching this. That, um, that text needs to stay there when you are successful so that it can be read. Okay, so we've beaten Raven. Let's transform into Raven. Let's get a look at her face. Uh, I might ditch the duffel bag in favour of where's that cardboard box I'm going to go to someone else like oh someone delivered this package to my house can you believe it and then just try and be friendly Frank's out and about now um, so we need to avoid him what's this house here I watched Thrak play this yesterday on his stream and he absolutely nailed it uh, technician backpack. Oh, that looks interesting. Like quite a complicated play. Christmas hat. Oh, okay, I can jump one way but not the other. I guess we'll go to this house then. Uh, 
where's the front door of this house okay so there's a red there's a bike helmet and an insulated backpack but I feel if I show up wearing his stuff uh, that's not going to be much good I don't know who's in here let's let's have a look Bud! Oh, it's Bud! <laughs> Dude, what's the buzz? Whoa, nice package you got there. What's growing on, man? Okay, so Bud is our local horticulturalist, if you get what I'm saying. His birthday is the 20th of April. Okay, so we need to go with, like, seeds. I feel like seeds is the way forward. But I'm Raven, I'm being Raven. Oh, hey, bud. I got this amazing box of seeds, but I don't have the equipment to make them grow to their fullest potential, and I need some tips. Oh, yeah. he, he liked that. Bud. Ah, seeds, man. That's like the start of something beautiful. Well, you got to make sure you got good soil, plenty of light, and you don't forget to give them some love and water. But hey, I gotta warn you, gardening can be addictive, man. Once you see those little sprouts popping up, it's hard to stop. Okay, I'm gonna go with, like, the mentorship route here. So she's gonna say, Oh, I know what you mean. I have tried a few times, but um, I don't have much luck. What I really need is a good mentor to show me how to get things started. Get those seeds germinating, you know? I always speed up at the end. It picks up the voice pretty well, which is good. But, dude, I totally get it. Sometimes we need, we all need a little guidance to green up our thumb. I'd be happy to share some chips, tips and tricks with you, but you got to promise to keep it on the DL. We wouldn't want anyone finding out about my secret garden, you know. He talks about his secret garden very easily. Okay, what should I say? Hmm, okay, uh, I'm going to say... Ah, oh, bud, that's so good to hear. It's so nice to know that there's a like-minded fella living on my street. Why don't we get inside and get to work? Oh, he might not like the word work. Oh, he doesn't like work. Oh, he's he's, play, he's He's on to me. He slammed the door. Oh no, I need to run. Okay, we failed with Bud. We were doing okay, but we uh, we jumped the gun slightly. I've got an open garble box. That's not very fun. We'll go back to Bud later, maybe when we're holding some food and be like, hey, I've got some munchies for you. Oh no! Shift. Run away. Whew. All right, so I'm back to my bedroom, and I hope Frank doesn't come up here. Uh, let's go for an easy win and go for Grandma Maud. I don't have a good costume. Oh, here we go. So yesterday I did a whole thing where I was a kid, and I'd flown my drone into her house, and my dad was, like, away at the army or something. Um... I need a food box. Oh, oh, neighborhood watchers around. She got some tomato soup here. Whoops. Thermos. Glasses. Uh, bug spray. Oh, okay, right, the thermos might have soup in it. So I'm just going to go straight for the soup, because I know that she likes tomato soup. Or at least she did yesterday. Oh, do you know what? I did say I was going to roleplay as Asterian from Baldur's Gate 3. So <clears throat> let me try my best Asterian voice. It's quite close to Austin Powers. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, hello. I was wondering if you'd like to share this thermos of tomato soup with me. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Darling, I'm hurt. Okay. 
Oh, hello, Grandma Moore, darling. I was wondering if you'd like to share this wonderful thermos full of tomato soup with me. Oh, behave. Ah, oh, she didn't like that. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm stuffing this right up. Maybe role-playing Asterion is not a good idea. Uh, let's try a little swipe. <laughs> Lil Swipe says, yo, what's good, my dude? You here to drop off some fire tracks or what? So I won him over by being a fellow musician last time. This time I'm going to go with I'm a radio guy and I want to interview him. Hey, Lil Swipe, I can do you one better than that. I'm actually here on behalf of KWPS, local radio, and I want to interview you exclusive like. Oh, he likes that. KWPS in the house. I made KWPS up. I don't know what that is. That's lit, man. I'm down for an exclusive interview. Let's make it happen. Okay. Yeah, let's make it happen. Oh, man, I'm so glad that you're totally up for it like that. It's that kind of go-getting attitude, which is exactly why you are on the rise. I've got a load of kit in my bag. He says, thanks for the kind words, my dude. Oh, he's just, yeah, okay, he's just let me in. Nice. Ha 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 ha. That was easy. Just flatter them and appeal to their uh, vanity. Okay, I think we'll go back to Grandma Maud and try, oh, I've got no, I'm not going in my swimming shorts. Let's go back to Grandma Maud and try and see if she wants to listen to some music no Christmas carols let's do Christmas carols oh my little swipe what a pleasant surprise how may I doth be of service to thee on this Sunday evening why is she talking like Shakespeare hmm Okay, we need to think on this one. Um, she talks like Shakespeare, so I need to rap like Shakespeare. Okay. This is going to be pretty cringy. Hey, yo, Grandma Maud, it's Lil Swipe in the house. Forsooth, I doth lost my Lil Pet Mouse. Ah, oh, sugar. She's a tough customer today. Oh, dearie me, you've lost your little pet mouse. Well, fear not, Lil Swipe. Grandma Maud can help you track him down. Tell me, where was the last place you saw him? Okay, here we go. I'll try and make it rhyme if I can. Well, Grandma Maud, I was chasing him around. I went to the garden. I went underground. I ran round to the back of your house. And there I saw him in the window. My pet mouse. Ah, oh, flipping heck. Oh my, what a pe peculiar tale you spin, Lil Swipe, but I'm afraid I must bid you adieu for now. Uh-oh. She's going to be attracting the neighbourhood watch. Yeah, you can stay over there. No! Okay. Not having much luck with Grandma Maud this time. Should we go back to... Uh this guy and see if he wants some food. Wow, I have food. Hey there dude, what brings you to my slice of paradise at this ungodly hour? Hey there bird, I heard that there was an order on its way to your house so I picked it up personally to bring it over and I thought we could hang out, shoot the breeze you know. Oh, he liked that. But, oh man, you went through all that trouble for me. That's real nice of you, dude. But I'm just going to chill here for now, you know? Tending to my little green friends. Thanks anyway, though. Okay, I'm going to get him talking about his little green friends. 
Oh well, little green friends, tell me more. You know I am an avid horticulturalist. Oh, I, I said know. friends plural. Oh, he liked it anyway, okay. But no way, dude, that's awesome. I love meeting fellow horticulturalists. I gotta admit, though, my little green friends are a bit unconventional. You know, they're more of the secretive type. But hey, we can still chat about our love for plants. Okay, I'm gonna start asking him questions instead of suggesting that I go in the house or anything. Um, people like to talk about themselves. Um, so I'm gonna lead with a statement about myself and then I'm gonna ask him two questions. Wow, that's awesome. My favorite plant is the vine. Tell me what tell me a couple of plants that you love. Legal like. Oh, maybe that last bit was not it's not cool. Mm -hmm. No, you like that. Bud. Dude, I love me some tomatoes and basil, you know, perfect some for some homemade pasta sauce. And hey, seems like you're pretty cool. Want to come in for a bit? Yes, bud. Time to die. <laughs> Not cool, dude. I actually feel a bit bad for killing Bud. Okay, what have I got? What outfit? Did, was he wearing... Oh, he's got cool shades. Alright. Let's wear Bud's backpack. Now, I feel like this outfit's not going to work well on Barry Bitcoin, so let's go a bit further up the track and see if there's anyone else we can... A map. <laughs> a lost traveller. Sugar. Don't you chase me. How do I get into this house here? Hmm. Maybe up the back of here? Oh, I see. This is where I jumped over before. Oh, this is Charles A. Boomer. Um, I feel like asking them questions is a more effective way. Oh, golf. Here we go. Got golf clubs and a meal. It's a Hello Fresh box from the look of it. Oh. Charles A. Boomer. What in tarnation are you doing knocking on my door at this ungodly hour? Speak up. I ain't got all night. Well, hi there, Mr. Boomer, sir. I actually was wondering if you were a golf enthusiast. And I also found your HelloFresh box on the door. Oh, no. <laughs> on the door. I've left it as an ellipsis. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow, he's not, he's not friendly. You better watch your step, young whippersnapper. No need for you to be poking around in my personal business. And I don't care about no golfing nonsense. But why have you got golf clubs? Oh, my mistake. Well, I am a clumsy oaf. I did think that these golf clubs that I found next to your door were actually yours. Somebody left been littering on your property again. He says, I don't care. Oh, I can't read it. Ah. He said something like, I don't care what it is. I think he didn't like my stoner outfit, so maybe I'll come back with a different outfit. I think if I come back with Barry Bitcoin's outfit and try and talk cars, maybe that's the that's the trick. Uh oh. Don't you come after me. Whew. Narrow escape. Hide behind this. If I go back in my house, maybe she'll go away. Now, I went into this video intending to kind of roleplay famous vampires like Dracula, Spike from Buffy, uh, Asterion, and um, also kind of like Edward Cullen from Twilight, but actually it's quite hard because you are very much reacting to what they're doing and saying. But the next one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and channel my inner spite from Buffy in it. See what, <laughs> see what he's got to say about that. Um, James Masters' accent is obviously completely flawless in Buffy, but it's more fun if I do a fake, a fake British accent. 
Can you get out of the way of Barry Bitcoin's house, please? Young lady. Okay, maybe if I go around the back of the houses. Round the back of the houses. Bow, bow, Barry Bitcoin. We're going to talk about bad investments. <laughs> Uh-oh. Decentralized finance is a joke because it lacks a regulatory framework to protect small investors. Right, here we go. Barry Bitcoin. Oh, he's not said anything this time. Ah, we have got a bit of a crash. Never mind. Maybe this is Barry Bitcoin trying to outfox me. <laughs> okay. Let's try again. There he is. Oh, Brian Bitcoin, not Barry Bitcoin. Um, I was thinking of Barry Blue Jeans from a, from a podcast, anyway. Uh, Brian Bitcoin. Hey there, fellow crypto warrior. What brings you to my crypto fortress? Did you come to discuss the rise of Bitcoin and conquer the moon with me? Absolutely, yes, I did. Cryptocurrency is the forward. I absolutely love decentralized finance. I don't want no middleman taking a cut of my money. Is the forward. <laughs> is the way forward. Brian Bitcoin says, Ah, I see you're a true believer in the power of crypto. Decentralized finance is indeed revolutionizing the financial world. No more intermediaries or excessive fees. It's a beautiful thing. So tell me, what's your favorite cryptocurrency and why? Oh yeah, I was going to be Spike from Buffy, wasn't I? Right. Um... <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> what's your favorite cryptocurrency and why? Well, somebody like me is interested in longevity, you see, and I think the most powerful one is Dogecoin. Have you heard of Dogecoin? It's got a picture of a doge on it. Uh. Oh, it doesn't like that. Dogecoin, huh? Well, it definitely has its charm with that cute doge face, but you know, it started as a meme coin, so I'm not terribly sure about its long-term viability. I'm more of a Bitcoin guy myself, you know, the OG cryptocurrency. It's got the track record and the community backing it up, but hey, each to each their own. What else intrigues you about Dogecoin? Okay, I need to change tack here. He's very sad, look at his face. You know what, Brian? You're right. I've been putting my money into the wrong assets all this time. Tell me more about why Bitcoin is more powerful than Dogecoin. The, somebody somebody yesterday on my video did, did comment that um, it does feel a little bit like an ad for crypto, this section. Um, it's very much not. I would not recommend anyone invest in cryptocurrency. Here he goes. Ah, glad to hear you're more open to learning you're open to learning more. Bitcoin is like the heavyweight champion of the crypto world. It's been around since two thousand and nine. That's only 14 years at the time of making this video, and has a proven track record of stability. It does not. Bitcoin's limited supply and widespread adoption make it more resilient to market fluctuations compared to the other cryptocurrencies like Dogecoin. So if you're looking for a solid investment with long-term potential, Bitcoin is definitely the way to go. Oh, all right, Barry, thank you so much for setting me right. I was totally on the wrong track. How would I go about investing in Bitcoin? What's the best way? Yeah, he says, thank you for being open to the wisdom of Bitcoin, my friend. The best way to invest in Bitcoin is through reputable cryptocurrency exchanges. You can create an account, complete the verification process, and then deposit funds to buy Bitcoin. Just make sure to... Oh, I've got him. I've got him. Haha, <laughs> you deserve to die for separating fools from their money, Brian. Okay, now I want to go back to Charles A. Boomer and say that I'm an FBI agent and I want him to help us oh sugar okay so what brand is his car that looks like a Fiat kind of alright
Special Agent Johnson's back on the case. Oh, he knows who he knows who Brian Bitcoin is. Oh hell. Okay, I'm gonna go with I'm actually Special Agent Johnson. Uh I've been undercover this whole time. Charles, it's time I came clean with you. I'm actually not Brian. I'm Special Agent Johnson and I've been undercover this whole time. The government needs your help. Oh, maybe not the government. Maybe the president? I don't know. Hmm. Government, huh? Well, if it ain't one thing, it's another. What's the trouble this time? And keep it short. I don't have all day for these shenanigans. Now, what's Charles A. Boomer likely to dislike? I have a funny feeling, since we're being ageist, it's probably Generation Z, Generation X, Generation Y, or Millennials. Uh... <laughs> Uh, let's go with Millennials. Okay, a hostile takeover of the real estate market. Well, Charles, what I've been investigating is a hostile takeover of the real estate market by Millennials. They are deliberately opening coffee shops selling avocado toast to devalue houses. Did it get houses at the end there? No, it didn't. Okay. Okay, alright, here he goes. Look, Charles A. Boomer says, Hostile takeover by millennials, avocado toast. Are you kidding me? As if we didn't have enough problems already. Alright, spill the beans, crypto bro. How can I help to stop this madness? So... I'm going to butter him up a little bit. Well, Charles, you're exactly the kind of citizen we want to see. Just keep doing what you're doing. Don't change a thing. Keep your eyes peeled and report any suspicious activities, such as hipsters with beards. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. You actually want me to do what I do best? Grumble about hipsters? Count me in, crypto bro. Come on in and let's hatch a plan to save the real estate. Didn't quite get all of that, but we've got Charles. <laughs> Have some of this. Give me all your money. Not the retirement I planned, he says. All right. Okay. I did a little bit of uh, role playing as Spike from Buffy, but not a huge amount. So, uh, Favel asked me to try and do Edward Cullen from Twilight. You're my own personal brand of heroin. Have we got somebody that that might work on? Oh, Frank's out there. Let's see who's in here. So need to Prano. What's the ruckus? What's, what's the ruckus, Boomer? Spit it out before I put the screws to you. Okay, so he doesn't like me. I'm going to go with... A controversial one. I'm not sure. Sony Tobrano is either going to respond very well to this or not at all. I've got a problem, Tony, and I need your help to fix it. It's the kind of problem that only somebody with your connections can help me with. My money's good. Okay. Oh, he liked that. Sony Soprano. All right, listen up. You think you're the only one with problems, but maybe I can help. Give me the scoop, and we'll see if we can come to an understanding. Um. Okay, I'm not going to say he's my own personal brand of heroin. I'm going to talk about Grandma Maud. Well, you see, the thing is, I've developed feelings for Grandma Maud. She's my own personal brand of heroin, and... Somebody's threatening me. <laughs> oh, he liked that. Sony Soprano. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're telling me you got a crush on Grandma Maud and somebody's trying to mess with you? Give me the details quick before I crack some skulls. I'm going to say it's Neighborhood Watch Frank. 
well you see what it is is we were having a date in the woods where I had her on the back of my shoulders running really fast my skin was glowing and Frank stopped me I could do this a bit longer actually oh hold it right there pal I don't know what kind of twisted story you're spinning but that's the last straw I can't have any funny business going on around here get lost before ah flip uh oh neighborhood watch are gonna come over there's Frank. I think every time you get a slam door, you get another neighborhood watch person. Let's go back to Grandma Maud. Just wait for the neighborhood watch to go past. Maybe Charles A. Boomer could invite her out for a date. But then mm, she does have a complicated past with uh, with men, from what I have been able to pick up. Let's try it anyway. Uh -huh. She says, oh, my stars and garters. Hello, dear Charles. What brings you to my humble abode at such a late hour? I'm going to say I've got two tickets to the opera. Let's see if she likes opera. Let's see if she's into opera. Opera's cool. Well, Maud, all it is is I've got these two last-minute tickets to the opera. It's the Nutcracker. Do you want to come along? Oh, she likes it. Okay. Grandma Maud. Oh, how delightful. The Nutcracker, you say. Such a marvellous ballet. I do enjoy... Oh, yeah, the Nutcracker's a ballet, not an opera. Oops. I do enjoy a good show, dear Charles. But I must admit, my old bones may not be up for a night out. Perhaps another time? No! Oh, I do understand. Believe me, I have a similar problem. However, I got a fast car and we can cruise out of here and it is the picture of comfort. It's a little bit of a Tracy Chapman reference there. Hello? Oh, no. I cannot crack Grandma Maud today. Oh, dear Charles, that does sound tempting, but I'm afraid I must decline. Oh, okay, just slam the door. I'm going to be crawling in Neighbourhood Watch in a minute. Okay, I'm going to try again, and this time I'm going to suggest we don't go out. Oh, you can't just come straight back. Okay, fine. She says, oh, my dear Charles, fashionably undead. If someone recognizes you from an earlier conversation, try getting another outfit. Well, most of my outfits are in the flipping road, because I had to run away. Let's pick up. This golf outfit. Just, this is just some random clothes, but maybe uh, random clothes will work. She says, Oh my, what a delightful surprise. Welcome, dearie. How lovely to see you. Am I going to... I don't know if I can roleplay Edward Cullen on this one. <laughs> Let's be Asterian. <laughs> oh, hello, Grandma Maud. I'm just delivering your... Hello, Fresh Box. Do you love fresh food and fresh cooking? It's just the best. Oh, she doesn't. Oh, man. Oh, how marvellous. I do enjoy a good meal. Though I must confess, my tastes have developed a bit of a darker edge over the years. But I'm sure your HelloFresh box will be quite delightful for most folks. Thank you, dearie. Oh, okay. Okay, I got it. Shh, don't tell anyone, but this is actually a box of chocolate liqueurs with a bottle of Baileys. Fancy tucking in? <laughs> Bottle of Baileys. <laughs> no, no, she don't like that. Um, Grandma Maud, oh my, I never. Well, it sounds like quite a lovely surprise, but I must decline. You see, I've had my fair share of indulgences in the past, and I'm afraid... Oh, oh missed the last of what she said there. Okay, we need another costume for Grandma Maud. 
Do you know what? If I go back for the original, what did I lose here? Oh, okay, I must have picked up that outfit again. Neighbourhood watch is over there. This is Brian Bitcoin. Okay, let's try this outfit on Grandma Mod. Uh, no, we'll come back to Grandma Mord. Let's go a bit further down the road. Um, I'm not sure who's in this house here. Did I already try this house? Oh, it's Sony Soprano. Oh, yeah, of course. Who the hell are you interrupting my peace at this hour? You better have a damn good reason for knocking on my door like this. Uh... Yes, I do. <laughs> well, Sony, it's like this. I heard that you were connected and I need your help with something. Oh, yeah. Connected? You heard right, pal. What kind of help do you need? Spit it out quick. I ain't got all day. Okay. Well, what it is, is I heard there was a shipment of olive oil heading its way over the bridge, and I need to talk to somebody about intercepting it before it goes awry. <laughs> now we're talking business. Intercepting a shipment, huh? That's a bold move, my friend. Tell me more about this olive oil and why you need my help. Um, olive oil is uh, a Godfather reference, by the way. Uh, that's how... Don Corleone got started with uh, smuggling olive oil. Um, tell me more about this olive oil. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All it is, Sony, is I got the money, I got the knowledge, but I don't got the skills. I need somebody who can help me plan this heist before it goes wrong. Maybe I shouldn't have used the word wrong. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Sony says, you got the cash and the smarts, huh? I could say you impress me. Come on in. We can discuss this heist over a nice glass of whiskey. You're going to die, Tony, Sony. You're going to... This is payback for all the innocent souls you've shot over the years. He says, you're biting up more than you can chew. Right, let's go back up to Grandma Maud as uh, Sony Toprano. What's this? A handheld scanner. Okay, we need to avoid the neighborhood watch. So let's go into this house, round the back. A lantern. A flower headdress. Okay. Apron and gloves. Oh, I see. This is like a gardening themed thing. Look, is that gardening gloves? A broom. Okay. Let's try a ga the gardening angle. Uh-oh. Okay, that's more of my costume in the middle of the street. Okay, now I need to find a costume. <laughs> oh, what's this? A sombrero? Hola, yo tengo un sombre. Sombrero. Small medicine bottle. Right, I'm going to be a female character this time. What's a good female vampire? Uh, I can't. I can't think of one. Like... Drusilla, maybe? She says, okay, Grandma Maud says, Well, aren't you a sight for sore eyes? Come on in, dearie, and let me brew you a fresh cup of tea. Well, that was easy. Okay, I'm going to do my best Drusilla from Buffy. Oh, Maud, that would be wonderful. I desperately need a sit down, and I'd love to have a chin wag about all of the goings on in the town.
Yeah, she liked that. Grandma Maud. Okay, sit down, dearie. Let's chat away. But you know, not everything in this town is as charming as it seems. There's a fair share of dark secrets lurking about. Did I ever tell you about that time the mayor disappeared, never to be seen again? Ah, but first, let me pour you that cup of tea. The mayor disappeared. I don't believe it. I didn't think I'd seen him a while. You're so sharp-eyed. I wish I had your quick wit and brains. Oh, have we got a server disconnect? Okay, let's give it like two seconds. Ba -ba 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 -ba. This may be my internet, perhaps. Ah, oh, I was onto something there. That's that's a shame. <laughs> well, hello there, dearie. What an unexpected visit. Are you lost on your way to the fiesta? Not lost. I just wanted to stop by and say hi. The fiesta isn't for another few hours. I heard there were some dark goings on in the town and you knew something. Grandma Maud says, Oh my, dark goings on, you say? Well, I may have a few stories up my sleeve, but be warned, dearie, they're not for the faint of heart. What do you want to know? Well, the first thing I want to know is, do you have any idea what happened to the mayor? I heard that he went missing. Only the well-informed, like you, would be able to tell me what that is. I meant to say, I don't know what I meant to say at the end there. That sentence doesn't make any sense. She says, ah, the mayor, a tragic tale indeed. There are whispers that he met with an unfortunate accident, but no one really knows the truth. Some say it was the work of the town's dark history, but who am I to say? Oh, she's got a sad face. Oh, Maud, you do yourself a disservice. You've clearly been investigating and thinking cle have cleverly about this. They want you to keep quiet, but you should speak out. Oh, she might feel in danger from that, actually. Oh no, she liked that. Oh my dearie, you seem to have mistaken me for someone else. I'm just a simple old lady, knitting and baking pies. I don't know anything about that dark business. No siree. Best not to get involved, you know. Oh, I sense she's going cold on that. You know what? You're right. Personal safety is the highest priority. Is there anything else on your mind that you'd like to talk about? A nice open question to like that. let her lead the conversation away, maybe? Yeah. Oh, how delightful of you to ask, dearie. Well, I do have a wickedly delicious recipe for my famous blackberry pie. If you'd like to hear it, it's been passed down in my family for generations. Blackberry pie, you say? That sounds amazing. I'm not the best baker, but I'm open to learning. Tell me, what are the main ingredients? I'm guessing blackberries, probably. Grandma Maud. Oh, my dear, I'm glad to hear your enthusiasm. For my blackberry pie, you'll need ripe blackberries, sugar, flour, butter, with a hint of cinnamon. Oh, we got her. Finally got her. Grandma Maud. You've had it, mate. Right, we're going to grab Grandma Maud's glasses and... Oh, where did the glasses go? Oh, I'm not sure. And we're going to wear the sombrero over the hair. <laughs> uh, I might lose the hair, actually. Just go sombrero, dress, and the medicine bottle, maybe? Okay, so I've done this house, the opposite house. That was Lil Swipe. Done Brian Bitcoin. Uh, Bud. I need to go around the back, I think. Can I jump through here? Oh, yeah, go through here. Alright. Oh, a cool mask. Wear old school hockey mask. That's a bit scary. Uh, was this Bud's house? Let's just double check. Oh, that was Raven's house, wasn't it? I've got Sony Toprano, we've done him. We've done Charles A. Boomer. So that's this street cleared up, actually. There's some neighbourhood watch up on the left. So let's try... 
Let's try this house here. I'm not sure who lives here. What's this? A pink beret. Maybe we'll lose the hockey mask and go for a dress. A pink beret. Some tablets. Uh, let's have a look around for something more interesting. Fun shoulder bag. Cool. That I'm carrying, not wearing on my shoulder. Okay, a beret, a dress, and a fun shoulder bag. Karen. Well, 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 what do we have here? A late night hippie with a questionable fashion sense. How can I help you, flower child? Okay, here's my angle. Did you hear about the corruption in the neighborhood watch? Let's get the gossip on the go. Um, oh. Mm. oh. Oh, she didn't she didn't bite. Oh, really? Well, I had heard it was just a rumor. I that's why I came straight to you. Are there any other rumors that you have heard about that you think people should know about? Rumours? Oh, I'm not one to spend... I'm not one to spread baseless gossip. I think it's best if we don't talk about these silly rumours. Well, it was nice chatting. Oh, she didn't like rumours. Okay. I'll come back to her later when I've got an idea. Let's hide in this bush. Do not come in the garden. Do not come in the garden. Okay, I didn't like that outfit anyway. Okay, I need an outfit. What's this? <laughs> cool. Surgical mask. A surgeon? Dressed as a surgeon? Who lives in this house? <laughs> Dr. Vicky. Well, 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 what brings you to my humble abode at this ungodly hour? Quick, no time to talk. I have a medical emergency and I need to consult with you. I'll pay you your going rate. Oh, she liked being paid. Dr. Vicky leans in, leans in, speaking in a hushed tone. Medical emergency, you say? Well, aren't you lucky to stumble upon me, the best in the business? Come inside, but keep your voice down. We don't want the authorities sniffing around. Oh my god, is she running like an illegal medical practice? Dr. Vicky, I knew you were the one to come to. Yes, absolutely, we need to talk more about what you can do to help me. I need to reattach a leg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she... Aha, a leg reattachment, you say. Fascinating stuff, my dear colleague. Please come in. Oh, all right, okay, we got it. We got Dr. Vicky straight off. I usually charge for this service. Okay, so I guessed right. I think it's a, a point of contention for... Um, in America that you don't have free healthcare, so maybe that was kind of the logic there that doctors uh, charge money or something. Okay, Dr. Vicky, I think, do I need some glasses? Let's put the surgical mask on. Maybe we could go back to Karen at this point. Oh, sugar. No, do not chase me. Okay, run around the back of the house. Let's go see what's going on. So is this the parallel street? No, nope, that's Sony Toprano's house. Okay. Should we go back to Karen as a doctor and see what see if we can uh, win her over as a doctor? Uh oh. I may have messed up here because if that neighborhood watch guy comes up, I can't get away. Karen, excuse me, why in the world are you standing at my doorstep in the middle of the night wearing a surgical mask and holding a syringe? Are you here to give me some miracle anti-aging treatment or something? Aha, she may have given up the golden goose here. Yeah, 
Yes, Karen, I am here to give you the miracle anti-aging treatment. Don't you remember we discussed it last week? This is revolutionary. Hmm, maybe that's a little bit too hard. Oh right, I remember now. I must have completely forgotten. Well, come on in then. Let's get this revolutionary treatment started. My wrinkles won't rate. Oh, poor... I feel a bit sad for Karen. Aging naturally is absolutely fine. I'm in my 40s and I have all kinds of laughter lines and grey hairs and all sorts. It's a, it's a wonderful part of aging. I kind of want to go with the angle of you're beautiful as you are, but I'm still going to drink your blood. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, might talk. Wait. Oh no! Oh no! That, oh, I didn't. Oh, I should be able to cancel it. Might say. Is that even proper English? I have serious doubts about your qualifications now. I don't think I can trust someone who can't even speak properly. Maybe I should reconsider letting you in. Haha, <laughs> you're very intelligent, Karen. Actually, I was just trying to say that you don't need the anti-aging treatment. You're perfect as you are, but if you want it, you can have it. I may have talked myself out of the kill here, but... Karen says, well, thank you for finally recognising my perfection. It's about time someone appreciated it. I suppose I can let you in then. I deserve the best, after all. A little bit of a cognitive dissonance here, but um, I'll take it. Absolutely, Karen. Self-confidence is key, and the people who have it deserve more. That's my opinion. Um, I'd love to come in. She says, Oh, how refreshing to hear someone who understands true greatness. You're welcome to come in. Oh, yep. <laughs> Come here. Gotcha, Karen. This is unacceptable service. <laughs> All right, we've got the Karen outfit now. Uh, maybe we need to lose the surgical mask. There she is. Okay. So we've got Karen. We've got the doctor. Who's over the road here? There's Frank. There's Frank as well. Fallout Roy. <laughs> what do you want now, Karen? Can't you see I'm busy wallowing in my own despair? Ugh, whatever. What's oh, uh, whatever. What's your issue this time? Hmm. Maybe I've gone in as the wrong person. Okay, so he obviously likes Fallout Boy. Ugh, I wish my girlfriend was here. She knows lots of emo bands. Okay, I've got it, I've got it. Well, actually, I was wondering, my nephew left his Bring Me the Horizon CD at my house. Would you like to have it? Oh, no, CD. CD? I'm showing my age there. Fallout Roy. Uh, Bring Me the Horizon? That's so mainstream. But all right, I guess I'll add it to my collection of disappointments. Just leave it at the doorstep. No way, man. I have to, I have to play it for you. Oh, absolutely. I didn't realise Bring Me The Horizon weren't the best. What is a better band? <laughs> well, there are so many great bands out there. Personally, I'm into My Chemical Romance and Panic at the Disco. Their music really speaks to my tortured soul. But hey, different strokes for different folks, I guess. Panic at the Disco, what an interesting name. Is Different Strokes for Different Strokes the name of one of their albums? Oh, I said strokes twice instead of strokes and folks. Whoops. Uh. Um, no, Different Strokes for Different Strokes is not the name of any Panic at the Disco album. It's actually a television show from the 70s. Oh, it is, yeah. Different Strokes will see you through. But who cares? Their music is a beacon of darkness in an otherwise meaningless world. Wow, Roy, that's so poetic. Have you ever thought about writing down your tortured lyrics? Uh. 
I was, was I? Call out Roy. Huh, maybe you're onto something. I've written some deep, angsty poetry in the past, but I guess I never considered turning it into lyrics. It could be a way to channel my inner pain. Thanks for the suggestion, I guess. Oh, he's smiling now, look. Maybe it's getting them smiling. I'd absolutely love to hear any ideas for song titles that you have. Let's see if Fallout Roy's got any song title ideas. Alright, here are a few ideas for song titles that capture the essence of my despair. Shattered reflections, echoes of sorrow, melancholic melodies, or the void within. Feel free to use them as inspiration for your own emotional journey. Okay, Karen's gonna say... Oh my gosh, Roy, that's so deep. I can't believe that we haven't talked about this stuff before. Here, take this CD, and I'll see if my nephew's left anything else if you want to hear it. <laughs> uh -huh. Wow, thanks for the CD. I'll give it a listen and see if it resonates with my tortured soul. And yeah, sure, bring over any other alternative gems your nephew has left behind. It's always nice to discover new music that perfectly captures our existential pain. Uh... Tell me some lyrics you've thought of and been thinking about writing down. Oh, I have. oh my gosh, she's really gone for it. Well, here's a little snippet of something I've been pondering lately. In this sea of darkness, I drown with no remorse, drifting through the shadows, feeling the pain of my heart's discourse, lost in the echoes of my shattered dreams, a symphony of sorrow. Oh, he's let me in, right. Sorry, Roy, I didn't like your music after all. Call out, Roy. I finally get to meet my Dark Lord. Oh, he embraced death. Okay. Kind of want the sombrero back, to be honest. So I'm dressed as Fallout, Roy. Uh oh. Run! We escaped there. I'm going to hang out in the woods in my swimming shorts um, and uh, formulate a plot to get the next bunch of houses. I got 10 houses there. That was pretty good going. Um, it was quite fun. Some of them are quite challenging because they don't give you a clear indication of whether or not you're winning them over or not. Um, and I have worked out as well, I think, that just asking to come in is bad. You just have to keep talking and eventually they will just kind of turn away and, and you can go in the house um, if you uh, enjoyed this video and you want to see more suck up then let me know in the comments uh, and please consider leaving a like on the video it really helps the channel out and it makes me feel good um, I've got a discord community called Puck HQ uh, there's an invite to that in the description of this video <laughs> neighborhood watch Frank is wandering around in the distance uh, over there and uh, you can also find that invite on the front, uh, invite sorry on the front of the front page of the channel if you want to come over. Um, we talk about games and bits and bobs, and uh, I have like a crew, special crew thing there where you can you can join up and uh, see the videos early and that kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, this was super fun. I uh, can't wait to do another one on it. Wherever you are in the world, have a lovely morning, afternoon, or evening, and I will see you next time.